So we're here with Greg Lohman. I went to high school in Teutopolis, Illinois. Graduated in 1994. So Greg, you've been in music for a while. You've been a drummer for Kelly Pickler, now Easton Corbin, um, several people, but how did you get involved in music in the first place? Well, I've always had a fascination with drums. And so when I was a little kid, I did the pots and pans thing. Uh, borrowed a drum set from my aunt and uncle, started playing on it, really not knowing what I was doing. And then I got in the band program in fifth grade here in T-Town. And uh, my band director, Mr. Lindvall, is a huge influence. And he's one of the reasons, pretty much the main reason why I pursued music uh, in, in the first place. Um, got a lot of great experiences in the band program through him, both live and in the studio. And then when I was thinking about what, did, what, what I wanted to do after high school, he kind of encouraged me to go to, to check out uh, Eastern. So I did and just pursued music that way and just went there for four years and kind of never stopped. So he's the main reason why I pursue music in general. Cool. I moved to Nashville in 2000. I, I was, like I said, I went to Eastern for four years. Then I got my master's at UT in Knoxville. As soon as I graduated, I moved to Nashville May of 2000. And, you know, Coming from a small town, I didn't know if I would be good enough to, to make it. And I'm a pretty quiet kid, um, kind of shy as a kid. So for me to go out and just uh, try to make it for in music, and I knew two people when I moved to Nashville, I was unsure. Like, could I do it? Was I good enough? But I just took kind of took a step by step. And, um, you know, and so far it's worked out pretty, pretty good. You've been with three artists since you've been in Nashville. Who are the three and describe those that moments of what it's been like so far. Yeah, so I started, my first kind of road gig was with Aaron Tippin, starting in 2003. It's with him for three and a half years. And it was a great experience for me being my first road gig, learned a lot. And then the opportunity came up to play with Kelly Pickler. She was on American Idol. Uh, so I, I left Aaron to go to her um, I was with her for over like 10 and a half years, which I never thought it would last that long, but it was a, it was a great experience. She's a great person. And, um, and then from there, I started with Easton Corbin in 2017 and I've been with him almost seven years now. And, you know, being a drummer is one thing, but every instrument is important, you know, has a, plays an important role within a band and how you play, but also how you interact and act off stage too is just as important, you know? If you're uh, kind of hard to get along with or in a bad mood, it reflects around to the people around you. So the more positive you can be and and uh, that off stage as well as on stage, the better. What is the biggest enjoyment you get out of being a drummer? Um, I just like making people feel good. And like, like when I'm playing and watching people, watching the crowd, having a good time, that's that just makes me happy. And uh, I like, I love playing drums and I'm able to do it for a living. and. And as I'm doing it, it gives, brings enjoyment to people and it makes me, all of everybody have a good time. What's life like on the road? What's life like in Nashville? How do you do it all? Um, that's a loaded question. So on the road, uh, we're gone, you know, most weekends we leave on a Thursday, get back on a Sunday, play Friday and Saturday night. So you're gone three and a half to four days for two shows. Um, and there's a lot of hurry up and wait. You know, you get up in the morning and uh, load in, set up around 10 or 10.30, and then have lunch at noon, sound check around two-ish. Um, depending, sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's longer. Um, have dinner about five, and then do the show, you know, eight, 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 eight o'clock, nine o'clock, um, and then wake up the next morning, you're in a different place, but kind of the same schedule, but different scenery. In your mind, what would be the biggest obstacle you face being a drummer? It's a great question. Um, probably just balancing a schedule because on the, when I'm on the road, that schedule is not, not up to me as far as when I'm gone. I'm at the mercy of whoever I'm playing for. So it's hard to balance other stuff in life, whether it be your personal life or other gigs in town, when if a gig comes up, I've got to be there. So it's hard to really schedule too much in advance for that, you know? Um, so that's probably the most difficult Part. Where are some of the biggest places in the country or world you've played at so far? Um, we've got to do some cool shows uh, like at Staples Center, Madison Square Garden. Um, when I was with, those were with uh, Kelly. When I was with um, Aaron, we did 
a show on the 4th of July in the uh, in Washington DC um, right outside before the fireworks there's a, a ton of people there that was really neat um, but yeah so just you know and we got to do a lot of USO tours when I was with Kelly um, they weren't as big of a crowds but they were for the troops and to me that that's the most kind of rewarding shows uh, a person can do it's great a couple years ago or should I say several years ago the CEO class here in Effingham put on the big event in which you were able to come and perform with Easton at the EPC. What was that moment like for you knowing that you were basically playing at home? Oh, that, that was great. First of all, the CEO class was started in part for Ms., by Mr. Linval, and that's when he was uh, battling uh, pancreatic cancer, but he was able to be there. So he's the reason that happened, right? And it's pretty cool I got to play on an event they put the CEO class put together. Um, it was really neat, and then he was there kind of down front, so I got to to watch him while I was playing. It's kind of a full full circle moment, but it was really neat for them to include Easton, have Easton come, and so I, you know, have be a, just be a part of that event was, was great. This last guy, this is a special guy here tonight. This here's kind of a hometown boy a little bit, you might say. They say it's too accomplished anymore, but they say it's T-Town actually. Yeah! This guy's one of the first guys to, uh, I guess, participate in this program. So, here he is, the star of the show, Mr. Craig Lowman. Yeah! Well, I'm going to What's the number one thing you've learned so far being in Nashville in the music industry? Um, that's another great question. And I feel like it's you've got to be a, a good player, first of all. But beyond that, you got to be a, a good person and not, you know, you can't be hard to get along with. You got to, you know, treat treat people with respect. All the, the things that get you far in life. It's the same, has the same, uh, um, same kind of thing in Nashville because somebody, every gig I've gotten was because somebody referred me um, and there's players way better than I am in Nashville which is good and there's people way better than me but um, you know I you know try to treat people fairly and be in a good mood when I can and but a lot of it is just kind of just being a good person what drummer do you look up to the most it's another great question um, there's a few of them for different reasons um, but Overall, I've been a big Def Leppard fan since I was a kid. And then I liked their music, but then I found out their drummer lost his arm, but kept playing. And I've gotten to meet him a couple times since. And so that's kind of one I've always kind of looked up to. And I still like their music. They're still out playing. You know, they're in the 60s now and still rocking live and sounding great. So it still continues to be an influence for me. As far as being a drummer, what's something that you don't look forward to? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say, well, with being on, kind of going back to being on the road, I don't create my own schedule. So if, you know, a month from now, I want to go take a weekend and do something with family or go to a wedding, I more than likely I can't because there's a show booked that weekend or I just, it's too far in advance for me to really plan anything. So that's probably one of the, the biggest negatives. But with everything you do, there's positives and negatives. So you kind of have to learn to deal with the negatives and enjoy the positives. So since you've played with all three country music artists, are you more of a country person or do you like to play, do you like to listen to more all genre? Um, I like to listen to anything and everything. Um, and the country, I, I grew up listening to country music, I enjoy it, but even country music has changed so much over the years, so new country now is like 80s rock back then, you know. Um, but no, and I teach as well, so I try to, you know, whether it be jazz, rock, country, blues, whatever it is, I try to, to keep my ears open to all genres and not just country um 
Well, being from a small town, like, I couldn't live here and do what I do. So part of it is you just got to go to wherever it's happening. And that's why I moved to Nashville. It was a big adjustment for me. And I was exposed to a lot of things after I moved away from here. Um, but I always like coming back. But, you know, everybody in Nashville, there's very, I met, I'm probably the number of people on one hand that I met that are from Nashville. Everybody's from small town, big town but they all kind of have a similar story. They're wanting to, to play for a living. So we all kind of relate to each other in that way, um, which is good. But some people are from smaller towns than I am, some people from big cities, but, but they're all there kind of for the same purpose. So it's neat, neat to, have, to meet everybody and get to know their stories. Compare Nashville to when you got there first to where you're at now. Completely different. Um, I mean, both good and bad. When I got there, there was only a handful of places to play. Like down, down on Broadway, there may be, I don't know, five or six clubs. Now there's, I don't know, 100, 150. Like it's, it's crazy. So there was a lot fewer places to play. Um, so less opportunities, but also the, on the good side of that, every place had amazing music, amazing musicians. And it was a great place to go to meet people because guys would be on the road on weekends and during the week they'd be down there playing, but they're all really, really good players. Um, which there's really good players down there now, but it, with so many bands, it's just more, um, just more diluted. You have you have more players, more bands, more stages. So, and some guys, that's all they do, which is great. Um, but it's just, it's just different. Um, it's just just smaller back then, uh, which made it tougher in some ways, but also made it better um, as well. But it's just it's changed a lot over the years. Over the last 24 years, I've been there now. Yeah. To me, it's more about who I get to play with in the band. Like, I want to play with guys I can relate to musically, that are good people, that we're all on the same page. Um, so it really doesn't matter who the artist, artist is to me. It'd be great playing arenas every night, you know? We don't do that with Easton, but yeah. So as far as a certain artist, you know, I'm open to kind of whoever, but to me it's more of the guys I'm playing with in the band that mean more to me. You play for three different artists. Um, changing how that person is to the next person to the next person, it can't be easy. How do you do it? Yeah, it's somewhat of an adjustment. Like when, with, for example, with with Aaron, um, I really didn't know any of the guys in the band super well. I met the fiddle player a little bit, and then the bass player came out to get guys doing just to check out. He got up and sat in, and so I knew them a little bit. But uh, with everything was new for me at that point because it was my first gig. But it, it was a great, looking back, it was a really good experience and a really good first gig for me. With Kelly, the guy who was putting the band together was a good friend of mine, and he put the band together, and the band were friends of mine. So that made it easier because I knew all the guys in the band, um, both great players, great people. So that was good. And then with Easton, um, my name got thrown in a hat from a couple guys in the band I knew, but I didn't know everybody. But overall, it's a pretty smooth transition. But from singer-wise, you know, Kelly sings a lot different than Easton. So as a drummer, I want to make the singer feel as most comfortable as they can. So I, you know, I would adjust what I'm doing a little bit um, for that, just by the way they sang. And but overall, you know, you just kind of um, kind of roll with it. And by playing, I still play around town quite a bit. So I just don't do one gig. So I'm used to playing with a bunch of different people. So it kind of makes it easier by doing that, makes it easier kind of filling in where I need. As far as favorite songs to play by Aaron Tippin, Kelly Pickler, and now Easton Corbin, what would that be? That's a tough one because they all had great songs. Um, with Aaron, and this is probably for more of a sentimental reason. When I first started with him, the first song of the set was a song called People Like Us. And it was just always, I don't know if it's because of my first gig, but always fun playing that to start the show. So that one kind of sticks with me. Um, with Kelly, um, there were a bunch of them over the 10 years. It's hard to narrow it down. Um, but there was a song called Didn't You Know How Much I Loved You, which we added like an outro, like a guitar solo thing. That was always fun to play. And then uh, with Easton, he's got a song called Girl Like You. And with drums, I get to, I've got a, another side kick and a side snare, so I get to, you know, kind of have some fun with that with different sounds. It's just fun to play. So I'm kind of recreating a groove, uh, recreating a loop with the, the side kick and side snare, then switching to the main snare and kick. So that's always fun to play.
girl like you don't come along but once in a lifetime better hang on i can't find one thing wrong i could just go on and on and on you got that beautiful born with the kind of thing that comes so natural no baby don't ever change Greg, you were involved in a pretty serious accident about 11 years ago. Um, tell us about what happened and how close were you to really not surviving? Well, I was very close to not surviving. Um, no, I got, uh, I was driving on 65 back to Nashville and I got rear-ended by a semi-truck because there was a, another bad accident in the northbound lane. So traffic in my lane was either slowed or stopped and then the truck behind me didn't. So uh, I got hit pretty good. Um, but looking back, like, I don't remember anything about the accident or the days before or after. Um, but I got to talk to the, the paramedics and troopers on the scene. And I'm very fortunate because after it happened, because there was another accident on the other, the uh, northbound side, there's already an ambulance en route to that accident, but it got diverted to me. So when my accident happened, like literally two or three minutes later, I had paramedics there. I had, there's fire department already on the other the scene because it was like a fiery accident so they were there so i had attention lit, like right away and uh they said if that wouldn't be the case it would be a different different outcome but uh but just you know i wouldn't recommend going through anything like that but i always like to take the uh the you know the good out of something bad that happens and there's so much good from the support i got to the people i've met and just and my whole just outlook and, and stuff on life now is different than it was prior. And, uh, you know, and I just want to make the, the most of a bad situation. What's it mean to you being from here Easton Corbin on the radio for KJ Country here in Effingham County. And then they mention your name. Oh, drummer Greg Loman from Zotopolis is, is the drummer for Easton Corbin. That's got to feel special to you. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. I don't, I'm not here to hear that a whole lot, but I've known, my family's known Greg Sat for a long, long time. And every time I come back to Effingham, I turn on the 102.3 and just to hear his voice, it feels like home. So it's, it's always great. That's Easton Corbin with a girl like you on KJ Country 102.3. Great tune right there. And uh, word is that, you know, Greg Lohman from the Titopolis area is the drummer for Easton, uh, running around doing all that fun stuff. And uh, that's got to be a favorite to play because that drum just keeps that song rolling. So great to hear about that uh, cool deal and got to be a great situation that Greg gets to play in uh, there with Easton and the band. Of course. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of family back here at home that watches, goes to your shows. How often is that and what's that mean to you? Oh, it's amazing. It's great. Anytime we're, I, I got a lot of family here, some family in Indiana, some close to St. Louis and just anytime we're drivable usually somebody will come out which is great and the the guys on the road they always ask me who do you have coming out today because typically i've got you know a lot of friends around the uh the country i went to school with guys guys uh, from college so more times than not i have somebody there to to check out the show and that's great it's great just to see him again but just the support um that i have from them you know and the support that i've had even from when i before i moved to nashville because that's kind of what I want to do. And uh, my family has never said, you know, question what I was doing. They're always there supporting me and, and right, right there for me. That's great. Who would be your biggest role model? By far, Mr. Linball. He is my band director from grade five through 12. He gave me experiences I would never thought I would have. And then even since I've been in Nashville, um, he used to uh, 
made documentaries and he had to have me do some music for him. But he was always there anytime I had a question, advice, whether professionally, personally, he was always there, uh, made time for me and always he always had the right answer. And I don't know how he does that or how he did that, but he always does knew what to say. But so he's by far the uh, biggest role role model for me. For the future, where would you like to play at? One venue on my bucket list I haven't been to or played is Red Rocks in Colorado. It's uh, I've seen a lot of video from it. It looks beautiful, and I heard it sounds amazing, and it's just hopefully one of these days I can knock that off the, the list. If you had to pick a favorite song right now, go-to song, and why, what would that be? It's a very, it may be the most difficult question you've answered, yeah, you've asked this whole time. Um, Today, I would say maybe Rosanna by Toto. A, because the drummer, Jeff Beccaro, is a huge influence for me. And I've heard that song played a bunch. I've played it a bunch. And it can never sound like that ever again because he's he passed away years ago. Um, so he's the only guy that can make it sound and feel like that. But if you ask me that same question tomorrow, I may have a different answer. When there's a new song out, when Aaron Tippin, when Kelly Pickler, and when Easton Corbin had a new song out, of course, you being the drummer, how long does it usually take for you to remember it from start to finish? Um, it kind of depends upon the song. Um, but for the most part, you know, not long. We'll listen to it a few times. I may make some notes on it. And then sometimes we'll rehearse. Sometimes we'll just run it and sound check. We'll play it and then do it at the show that night. So not super long. Um, but once again, it kind of depends upon the song and uh, and how involved it is. But for the most part, not too long. What's it mean to you have so much support from our community, but also in Nashville? Because you can't have it without that. Right. Support's huge. And just for my family, they never question what I wanted to do, like move to Nashville. What do you what do you want to do that for? They've never done that. They've always, always been supportive. Even when I was playing drums in the basement, probably irritating them. It was really loud. They never gave me a hard time about it. So, and then... You know, this T Town's a small community, and everybody kind of knows everybody, and you know, everybody's just super supportive. And then the Nashville community, going back to when I had my accident, you know, I was out of work for a few months, and they put on a fundraiser for me, and and just they came together and helped me a lot. So the family is huge for me, both here in Illinois and back in Nashville. With these bandmates that you're along with, you're with them right now more than you're with your family. How important is that? And do you feel like what relationships you have built over the years? Oh, that's huge because it's a, it is another family. It's a road family. I, you just, I spend more time with those guys than I do really anyone else. Um, so yeah, the currently with Easton last year, we had some changes with band personnel for different reasons, but they're all, I've known the one of the bass player now, um, I've known for, known him for years prior. So when he came in, it was, it was a piece of cake. Um, the guitar player has been there way before me, so I've known him for seven, eight years. And then back with Kelly, it's pretty much the same band, same core guys for a good chunk of the, the whole 10 years. The same bass player who's my best friend, Jay, and he was with Easton for a bit as well. Um, yeah, so you, you grow close to the, the, those guys, you know, um, and they are a second family. What advice would you give to young drummers wanting to be like you and make it in Nashville? Uh, to work hard. And if you think you're working hard, work harder. Um, treat people nice. Um, Cause you never know. I've met so many people over the years. I met them at, like on one gig and then 10 years later, I'll run into them on another gig. And had we had a bad encounter or experience, um, the second time I would meet them probably wouldn't go so well. So don't burn any bridges. Um, just try to be a good person. I know sometimes it's not always easy, um, but you gotta be, 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 a, be a great drummer, work hard, practice a lot, and just be a good person. What would you tell the young Greg when you were young to where you're currently at now? First thing I would tell him is he's not gonna grow very much more. I'm still short. Uh, but no, I was very reserved and quiet as a kid, and I probably would tell him just not to be so reserved, just, you know, be more outspoken and uh, soak in things more um yeah just kind of looking back because if i would be that shy now i wouldn't be doing what i was doing i would just
because you got to go out and meet people. And when I moved to Nashville, it was uncomfortable for me at first. So if I could do it over again, um, you know, I'd probably just it'll be a little bit more outgoing. I come. I'm trying to make most holidays. Um, I'd like to make it home more, um, but this it worked out to me come home this week and my mom finally retired. Um, so we had a gathering for her and was able to come home for that. But uh, there's times I like to come home more. I've got a bunch of nieces and nephews. They're all getting married. And a lot of the times I, I can't because I'm on the road. Um, with Easton, he works really consistently on weekends. So it's rare to have an open weekend. Um, so typically I'll leave on a Wednesday or Thursday, get back on a Sunday or Monday and you know play gigs in town and teach, teach on Tuesdays. Um, so it's when I do have a week off, it's nice just having it off and not really going anywhere. So a lot of people ask how it kind of got started in Nashville. Um, and I feel like it, it leads prior to me even being in Nashville. I was going to school in Knoxville at University of Tennessee to get my master's. And uh, they had a thing called the Tennessee Valley Fair. And they had acts there, diff different act each night. There's an act called the Kinleys. It's a sister duo from back in the, I guess, I don't know, late 90s mid to late 90s and uh, so they were playing. I remember being in an, an orchestra rehearsal at the school. I was gonna go that night, but I was like, I wasn't, had a headache, just didn't feel like going. But thankfully I did, I went. The drummer was amazing. I hung around to try to meet him. So I caught him as he was walking off the bus, introduced myself and uh, he's a great guy, a guy named George Lawrence. And um, so I met him, he's like, hey man, I." teach lessons out of Nashville if you ever want to come over so um, I did I would drive every four to six weeks I'd drive to Nashville just to take a lesson from him and kind of get to just get to know the area more and by doing that over the last you know I did that I don't know a handful of times uh, he introduced me to a guy named Johnny Rabb who had a drumstick company in Nashville so I met him and then as when I was getting ready to graduate moved to Nashville he's like hey man I've got this house I've got an opening um, would you, do you need a place to stay? It's like, sure. And then by, I met Johnny. He's like, man, we've got this office in Nashville and we kind of need some help at it. doesn't pay a whole lot, but would you be interested in, in, uh, in working? It's like, of course. So by going to that one show and going to meet George afterwards and taking lessons from him, I had a place to stay in Nashville and a job even before I moved there. So I look back to that one instance and I feel like things would be very different had I not done that, you know? So it's, it's one thing to have those opportunities, but also you got to make the most of the opportunities. I, if I wouldn't have pursued him or met him after the show, if I wouldn't have driven to Nashville those handful of times to take lessons from him, that still wouldn't have happened. So I look back on that one night that I kind of vividly remember uh, for some reason, and it, it's a real key to, I feel like, my development in Nashville. Five to 10 years down the line, what are some of the goals you would like to achieve? Um, I, w I teach part time at, at Lipscomb in Nashville, and I want to, and that's a great program that's really growing. They have a commercial music program, so hopefully, uh, I'll still be there, and the program will be bigger and better than it is now, uh, because that's something long term. I feel like I can still be involved with um, the road. I would like to still be on the road, but not as much as I am now. Um, and you know, because there's always going to be guys younger and better than me, and. I'll be an old guy, older guy then. So, but no, I still like playing live and I hopefully still play a little bit around town. Um, but I like to record a lot more. Uh, I record, it's been busier lately and I'm set up to record at the house. So somebody sends me a song, throw drums on it. Um, and hopefully I can keep growing that in the next five or 10 years as well. I've, there's a lot of people, I've got a lot of relatives here and they'll come to shows without me even knowing they're at the shows. And you know, like the, the show at the EPC, I run into somebody after that and they'll say, hey, it was good to see you play with Easton or Kelly or whatever. And you know, I didn't even know they were there. So people have the show the support um, without me even knowing they are. But uh, from my family to you know, local radio stations to everybody, it's just, it, it takes a, it's like a team effort, you know? And uh, it's just very kind of humbling when that happens. Greg Lohman, 1994 Teutopolis High School grad. Been in Nashville now for 24 years. Played for three different artists. Greg, thank you for sharing your story. I really appreciate it. Good luck to you in your career. And we hope you keep doing having success with Easton. I appreciate that so much. And if we do this again, I got one request. You gotta wear a Cardinal shirt instead of a Cubs shirt. <laughs>